Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my Startup Roadshow. I am here today with Randall. And I think the way to introduce Randall is he's a dude who messaged me on Twitter. And uh, he was like, yo, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a little interested in this thing you've got going on. Can we get on a Zoom call? We get on a Zoom call. And I kid you not, 15 minutes later, he's like, all right, I'm in for 10K. And <laughs> <laughs> bro i walked downstairs i was just I, I went to my mom she was cooking i was like yeah i just got 10k and she's like it was, it's been 15 minutes and i was like yeah the guy liked me and yep. she was just like i don't know what the fuck you're saying to these people to get you so <laughs> it's really interesting now when i say that there's a lot to that because i spent 10 years in competitive international debate so there was a lot of communication skills that went into the ability to speak to someone for 15 minutes and sort of have them have the level of competence that's necessary to make that type of investment decision. So first of all, thank you for making the investment. It means the absolute world to me. You are subsidizing my ability to go chase my dreams, which I cannot understate. We have this apartment, this studio where we've been working all day. It's like, this is my dream and I get to live it partly uh, because of you. So thank you for that. Number two is what happened in those 15 minutes or leading up to those 15 minutes for you to ultimately make the decision and be like, yes, I want to make this investment. Even if it goes to zero, I think there's a chance. Well, so I, you know, I had done a little bit of research. I watched some of your videos prior to that. So it wasn't just the 15 minutes. Um, but, you know, the first criteria for me was the product. Do I like the product? Do I think it has legs? Do I think it's doing something different? And the answer all of that. And again, that was before the meeting, right? I, I went through your pitch deck and I did all that. Uh, and, and the product seemed fantastic. The idea, the execution, it all seemed there. Uh, the meeting for me was about just getting to know you, getting to know uh, what are your skills like, because doing content on a video and a podcast and one-on-one -on -one is different, Yeah. right? So, you know, does he have these skills when it's one-on-one, -on -one, when there's no editing, when there's none of that? And when like, it's interpersonal communication, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and of course you did. And like, that was, you know, sort of sealed the deal for me was like that you have those interpersonal skills that I could see that you knew this product, that you believed in this product, that you were willing to like go out and hustle and be uh, the idea guy. Right. You know, just talk about it constantly, 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 and, and lead the way on that. And from, from those 15 minutes, that's what I got. Right. So I, I want to talk about that a little bit more. But before we do that, you said product was the first criteria for you. So can you give a, a I forgot to ask you this, but what is your background? You come from a more technical computer background, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I went to school for computer science and math. I double majored. Uh, I'm now working as a software engineer at uh, Reviture. Um, so I, I, you know, have this, this technical background. I also, um, you know, took a couple of internships to doing technical things. And, and I tried to, I, I tried to, to do some other thing. I tried to launch a company and it didn't get off the ground, but, but I also have some, some background in what it takes to uh, just talk to people about a company, talk to people about a product and, and, and do that. Right. Um, but my background is mostly is more technical. Right. And I, I think that's interesting. And we're going to get into that in a second after the product, because you have a technical background, but a lot of the things you were looking for were like really interpersonal kind of communication things. And I think the reason for that is because, because you're so technical, you kind of know that the tech is just not enough at the end. Like you've got to have that person that could, that could go out there. So we'll talk about that in a second. Now, product. Uh, we're building an algorithmic search engine for audio from the ground up. We are not using content that is already sourced all over the interwebs. We are building a recommendation engine quite literally from zero to one. People upload content. We have to create unique deep learning algorithms around that content to get people discovered because the gap in the market space for audio is just there is pretty much zero discovery when it comes to audio content. So what, what kind of attracted you about the idea when you were going through the pitch deck? Was there anything that stood out and you were like, I think this has a chance to potentially become big? Uh, so well, for a product like this, you need to be able to onboard users, right? You need to give uh, particularly the, the creatives you want on there because if, if people are, you know, if you have these, these people who have hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube, on social media, using your product, then, then people are going to come to listen to them. Yeah. So the, the key value proposition for me was like, you know, 
if I'm a creator, if I'm looking to create content, which you know maybe in the future, but not right now. But like if I'm if I'm looking to create content, is this is this a value proposition? And the the answer is clearly yes, right? Like clearly you're doing something different, and you're doing something that's going to allow, uh, you know, relatively unknown creators in a space to be discovered organically within that space. And you know when I stumbled upon like that one sentence summary that one sentence value proposition for creators i was like sold right this yeah. is a great product and and i'm excited to move forward with this guy right and, and, and product execution is really really difficult but i think there's a lot of variables that go into product execution and actually getting network effects and scaling but like that core thesis that i have which is kind of the same reason i think we see some of the the major media companies not uh, thriving as much as the tech companies which is that user that we are in a massive attention shift in our economy right now to user generated content over mm -hmm. premium. Like we want to, to know, you know, a hundred people to last night showed up to watch me talk from 11 to 12, a hundred people. It's like a hundred people gave up an hour of their sleep to listen to this guy literally rant. It's like, well, why is that happening? It's like, cause on a macro level, it's more personal, it's more authentic. It's more like, like there's a feeling there. And so that means there is a opportunity over the next decade for hundreds of millions of people, in fact, the 3 billion people that don't have access to internet yet, they're going to want to create, they're going to want to express themselves, they're going to want to get discovered, they have dreams and goals and aspirations, and they want to get a little slice of those, their thousand true loyal fans to, to support them. All of these people are looking for distribution, they're looking for discovery. And it's not that the big tech platforms right now are bad, it's just that they're really crowded. I mean, YouTube gets 500 hours of video uploaded a minute, try uploading your dinky little podcast that no one cares about and see if it goes anywhere. It's not that it can't, it's just, it would be a bit easier if there were more of these platforms, which is what TikTok has done to YouTube and now allowed so many more people to get discovered. Yeah, and, and I mean, especially like doing it uh, algorithmically and doing it within certain spaces and looking at, at what users are, are looking at and what they might be interested in, that, that, was, that was the real selling point for me. Is if you make a podcast, I mean, my cousin has a podcast about wrestling. Right. So he's making a podcast about wrestling. And if you get people who are already interested in wrestling podcasts, they come back. Like if you direct them to that content, that's that's all you need. Right. right? All you need is that, that sort of curation. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, the value is in curation because uh, again, YouTube mm -hmm. gets 500 hours of video a minute. 99.9% .9 of people will never see most of that other, other than the stuff YouTube selects to curate. And yep. so if we can build a recommendation engine that is done, doing theoretically what YouTube does for video and Instagram does for photos for the audio landscape, and we cure it effectively, then there's going to be a lot of wrestlers and poets and comedians and people that get discovered if they're doing that type of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So product uh, execution. So you come from a technical background, you're betting on a guy that doesn't really know that much about code. Uh, but that has some inkling of, of what it takes to get people's attention. Can you speak to a little bit to uh, wanting to like, I guess, essentially bet on me at the end of the day uh, to, to, to like take this product to the masses and go from zero to one in terms of gaining some distribution? Well, you, you look at the, the, the really great uh, companies that have come out in the last 40 years, right? Apple, uh, yeah, yeah, Tesla, that, Tesla they, they, were, they were created by these, these, teams of people that had a, a very technical guy, the Steve Wozniak to Steve Jobs hustle and, and marketing skills. And so when I look at you and your partner, I don't remember your partner's name, but um, when I looked at you and your partner, that's what I saw, right? I saw this guy who was out there talking about it, who was out there doing marketing, who is like, you know, hours and hours per day, just churning out content, talking about the product, talking about things that you're passionate about. And the, your partner has like 20 some years working as like a technical person. And I mean, the, the, like if, if there is a secret sauce, right? It's gotta be like having a technical person who is passionate about the product, having a marketing person who is passionate about the product and having them both be committed to doing the hard work. Right, yeah. that's, that's gotta be it. Yeah. And my, my, uh, my co-founder, Amin, he would be happy. You don't remember his name because he's so <laughs> anti-social. I mean, in terms, in terms of putting himself out there, like most technical people, right? That's one of the reasons. So for those who, who may not know yet, Amin is 51 years old. He has a wife and he has kids and he lives in California. Like he's done well for himself in his life. Right now. He, the reason he partnered with me when I was 23 and I was like, Hey, you're not going to get paid for years, even though, you know, you can make so much money. He was, he was looking for that person that had the youth 
and the energy, most importantly, and the communication skills to get people to care. Because he was like, look, I've made money. Now I'm trying to make hundreds of millions. And the only way that happens, I think, is he recognizes like, you could build the tech, but like, if no one gives a shit about it, like, like what, what matters? And I think he saw that in me back in 2020, which is why he chose to partner with me. So um, not knowing his name, he's fine with that because he loves just being underground and just doing all the tech work. But the partnership formed in sort of a symbiotic relationship because he's 29 years into doing this. I mean, he's built out everything, the algorithm back in front. We haven't paid an engineer to do anything else because he knows how to do everything. He's just, he just knows it. He gets it. He's a CTO. He understands. Yep. Um, and, and I'm the marketing guy here. Um, the, the, the $10,000, was that a, a significant amount to you? Are you at the point in your life where you can make these little angel investments? How do you feel about that? Um, so I wouldn't, it's, it's definitely not an insignificant amount. You know, I was sort of looking at the financials and I was like, well, uh, you know, this is what I can afford. And, and you know, you, you always, whatever you make an investment, you know, this is, I'm not a certified financial advisor, all that disclaimer stuff, but whatever, whatever I'm looking at an investment, I'm like, all right, can, and especially a, 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 an angel investment like this, can I afford to lose it? And the right. answer was, you know, I, I don't want to. Right, we're not. No one wants to lose ten grand. That money on fire, <laughs> but like, yeah, I can afford to lose it. Um, and and but it's because I'm I'm you know 31, 32 years old. I, I don't have a family. You know, my risk tolerance is is pretty high. And yeah. you know, I think that I think when you risk a lot, you can gain a lot, but you can also lose what you started with. So you have to be uh, you have to be uh, aware of that, and you have to be uh, conscious of that. Right. And that, that was, that's what I was also going to ask as well. Is like, um, this is, you know, I've been making a very conscious attempt to tell anyone who's been thinking of investing is like, look, if this works, there will be an outsized return because this is a tech company. Tech companies have very high premiums, even if, if we get bought out. Like, it, it's going to be a big return. Right. The odds of that happening, though, truly are like 90% fail, 10% succeed. I mean, this, we're competing with some of the biggest technology companies in the world. Sure. So if you do make an investment in these types of startups, you just have to be okay with like, all right, I really think there's a shot, but if it goes down the drain, then it goes down the drain. And it's like, all right, it was, it was a good try, at least uh, seeing what could happen. Yeah. Um, in terms of 90% failure, 10% success, uh, when you play those odds in your head, obviously you put 10,000 in Google today, there's a much better chance it doubles in the next five years versus my startup. Right. Uh, what was like the, the, the key pinnacle moment where you're like, Yes, I can afford to lose 10K, but also I think there's an outsized return opportunity. Was it purely just like, if a MIT gets the world to care, this is going to win? And that's where you're like, all right, I'm going to make the decision at that point. Well, I, I do think that you can get the world to, to care, right? I, I do like that that's, that is part of the part of the appeal. It's like, I do think that you have that in you, right? From talking to you, from interacting with you, from watching your interactions with others, I do think that you have what it takes to get the world to care. Um as far as the, it, it's, I, I don't think it's, you know, 90% fail, 10% succeed, and that's in a vacuum, right? Right. Because, right. like, the 90% that fail, like, you know, not, not, that, not that hard work and, and talent is a guarantee for success, but you don't get success without those things. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, some percentage of those didn't have the work ethic, didn't have the skills, didn't have the, like... The, the background didn't have the like, there was just something that didn't line up. Some like, of them never raised a dollar of outside capital, right? Exactly. The, and, and so you look at that and you say, oh, like this is, this is a risky investment. Yeah, it is a risky investment, but it's not, it's not as risky as, as, as it looks on the surface when you're just looking at the, the numbers and the data. Right. Right. Uh, okay. Last two questions. Our, our, our marketing uh, distribution strategy to get users onto the platform to try to create network effects to try to get creators to post is going to be obsessively creating a personal brand around me and then using the traffic from that personal brand, uh, primarily from short form video because short form video is in its golden age in terms of distribution organically mm -hmm. uh, to then drive traffic to the product. I have been telling investors for the past six months and you know, if they've invested, they've been on board with the strategy that if I take your 25K or your 10K and I throw it into Facebook and Google ads, it's, it's, it might get us some users, but it's not going to be that thing that really starts a movement and an emotional connection and people wanting to tell their friends and them falling in love with the story of this guy trying to build something. So that's why we're going the organic content route and hiring videographers and creating an actual team. How do you feel about that type of content marketing strategy? Do you think it's smart? Do you think there's some benefits to it? Like, do you think there's a chance that that uh, marketing strategy can actually attract people to join the platform? Oh yeah. I, I think that marketing strategy is genius. I, I think it's, 
I think there's there's a huge temptation to just like throw it all into into you know ads on ads on Facebook ads on whatever Instagram and just say all right well that'll that'll either work or it won't right, right. but the core of building a, a a small tech company like this is the marketing right you have to be able to look at the marketing and say like this like I think this is going to work and and I mean you you've told me that that some of the people that inspired you and some of the uh, the people that you were looking to as far as as far as a, a marketing plan is concerned and that was that was a real comfort for me but I, I think that that creating short form video like this is is uh, it's a knockout that that's I think it's fantastic I, I think you're on the right track with that. right okay last question Randall what yep. uh what, given you're older than me you have some more experience what advice do you have for me over the next five years of I'm trying to build this thing. Stay on that grind. Don't ever give up. I mean, I don't think you're gonna. I, I you know, I think you got a good head on your shoulders, and I think you're gonna, you know, wake up every day and, and get after it. You know, I mean, I know that from the, from your tweets, from everything you're doing, that's that's what you're doing. But don't don't ever give it up, man. Be be who you are. Be passionate about what you're doing, and let let that show through. All right. I love it. Thank you so much, Randall. I appreciate Thank it. You. it means Thank the absolute you. word to me. Thank you so much.